Gleason Tipov versus Habib Nurmagomedov. Now, what really happened in this fight? The most controversial fight of Habib's career, what a lot of people thought the only fight Habib should have lost, or the first time he should have lost a round at least. Now, after going through the fight multiple times, I will say right here, as an overview, I do believe Habib won the first and second rounds very, very slightly, and the third round, I believe, can be a toss-up, depending how you see it. Now, the reason why I think a lot of people believe Habib lost this fight is because of the commentating. The commentating was extremely biased against Habib, and this is not the first time you've heard Joe Rogan or someone else not noticing a lot of what Habib is doing in a fight. Of course, we all remember Habib's fight with Ally Quinta. The commentators made it believe like Habib was struggling out there and it was a close competition or closer than any other competition Habib's ever had, even though Habib dominated the fight and delivered the most lopsided decision of his career. This was the beginning of the commentating bias against Habib, and I believe it's a huge reason why a lot of people do think that you lost this fight if you watch it on mute mute the fight and watch it on fight pass or whatever and then watch it with the commentating you will 100% notice the bias against Habib in this fight there are things he was doing in there that the commentators and a lot of people were missing out he would land some punches land some kicks have some pretty sharp defense not the best offense his offense was extremely wild but his defense was a lot sharper than his offense and the commentators were not pointing that out it was a reason why Gleason Tiba was not landing many strikes in the entire fight both of them barely landed anything in the fight to be honest and and it seemed like Rogan and Goldberg were really giving T-Bob more credit for defending things than actually delivering offense when he was barely even being successful with anything he was throwing or attempting in the fight. He was more of a defensive shell than Habib was. Habib won this fight because of volume, pressure, octagon control, and aggressiveness. Now you have to note, this is before USADA, as well as before the new rules. Octagon control and aggression were way more important than today. Those factors of the rules can actually win you fights alone. If you were more active, if you were pushing the pace, if you were being aggressive, you can actually just win off that. And Habib had that way over Glacian t -Bow. The fact that they didn't have much over each other in terms of damage, even in the new rules, I do believe Habib would win this fight. Now I have crunched the numbers and looked at how long Habib Habib had Gleason Tebow past those black lines closer to the cage, which shows him pressuring Gleason Tebow, and as well as Gleason Tebow having Habib closer to the cage throughout the entire fight. But I'm going to go round by round and then tell you the total. In the first round, Gleason Tebow pressured Habib past those black lines for 56 seconds of the round. Habib had Tebow past those lines for 2 minutes and 18 seconds of the round. Almost half of the round, Habib was pressuring Tebow past those black lines. We look at the second round, Gleason Tebow only pressured Habib past those black lines for 12 seconds. Habib pressured him for 2 minutes and 16 seconds. A huge difference in pressure and octagon control. And then round three, it's even more lopsided. Gleason Tebow was getting tired in the fight and he was only able to pressure Habib for 9 seconds past those black lines, while Habib had Gleason Tebow past those black lines for 3 minutes and 6 seconds. That is a huge thing to look at in this fight. So for the entire fight, Habib had 7 minutes and 40 seconds of pressuring time on Gleason Tebow, which is over half the entire fight, while Gleason Tebow only had 1 minute and 17 seconds of pressuring time. The fact that both of them weren't really landing that much on each other, Tebow had a few takedowns, but he did nothing with them. Habib was able to reverse them and then pressure him afterward and land strikes of his own, which can kind of negate or equalize that entire exchange. When it comes to scoring in this fight, because there wasn't much much landed in the fight and many takedowns actually secured in the fight. Just looking at the pressure rate numbers and look at the octagon control and aggression, Habib has that way over Gleason Tebow, which is why he won every single round by 10-9. And when you look at the actual numbers of the fight, first round Tebow barely landed more than Habib. He landed 15 to 8 total strikes and 10 to 8 significant strikes. That's very, very low almost equal. In the second round, Habib landed more total strikes, 14 to 12, and they landed the exact same nine significant strikes. In the third round, Gleason Tibal landed 19 total strikes to Habib's 11 and nine significant strikes to Habib's eight. The numbers and strikes were almost exactly equal in the fight. Gleason Tibal only got one takedown on Habib. Officially, the reason why they didn't give him the second is because he technically didn't have enough control time to make it an official takedown. Habib was able to reverse right away, pressure Tibal to the cage. So when you go by the numbers, they are relatively equal. And when you talk about the lopsided of pressuring time in the fight, Habib will win these rounds in the judges eyes. So essentially everything was close, almost dead even besides octagon control and aggressiveness which Habib trumped. And when you look at the first round, Habib landed the absolute biggest punch in the wild exchange. Huge haymaker lands hard on Gleason Tebow. t 
T-Ball did have a big left hand in the close exchange against Habib, but did not have the same kind of effect. And when you look at the second round, even though Gleason T-Ball did land a looping left hook counter shot and another inside right hook counter shot to the wildness of Habib Nurmagomedov, and he did land a knee to the body, Habib landed the best shots of this round. He landed an elbow in the clinch, he landed a four punch combination, breaking away from the clinch and then re-engaging into it, not allowing Gleason T-Ball to land anything in there. Now in the third round, T-Ball actually landed the bigger shots. He landed the hardest strike probably in the entire fight when Habib fell into the counter knee. He also landed other knees to the body throughout it. They both landed hard on each other in an exchange. That right there was the biggest shot Habib landed in this round. And Habib did slightly land a looping left overhand countering T-Ball's takedown. But in this round, when you look at just the strikes, T-Ball won this round due to the damage. But in the first and second, Habib was able to deliver a little bit more damage than T-Ball was. But again, when you look at the third round, what could kind of trump the damage because of the old rules, Habib had a lopsiding pressuring time, aggressiveness, and octagon control over T-Ball. It was more than the other two rounds. He was way more busy than T-Ball was in this one, and that ultimately could have won him the round. But technically, what was going on in this fight? Well, Habib was extremely wild. You have to remember, he was only 23 years old, a Sambo master with just developing striking skills. Whenever he got pressured, he would break it with wild overhands, and Gleason T-Ball will always back up from the wildness, giving Habib more room to work with, as well as pressure T-Ball backwards with that momentum. Habib always was trapping the lead hand. They are in opposite stances, so Habib is pawing out with his lead hand to trap Gleason T-Ball so T-Ball cannot use it. He did this for two different reasons. One, to feel out the distance, of course. Course, he did this for his offensive attacks as well as moving away, able to use that measuring stick to keep the necessary distance away from T-Ball whenever T-Ball went to attack him. And the other thing he did was whenever he wanted to take off an angle when he was being pressured, he would move out to his left away from the power hand, as well as trap the lead hand of T-Ball so T-Ball could not use it. Doing this eliminated everything T-Ball can do to intercept Habib with some big shot. He cannot throw the big right hook, he cannot throw a jab, and he cannot throw the left hand because Habib is moving away from the left hand and he's trapping the right hand. Very intelligent by a young Habib Nurmagomedov, something fighters even to this day don't even do. Habib was also fainting throughout the fight to pressure T-Ball a little bit more. In that first round, he saw that triple faint like he's gonna go low to get T-Ball to back up every single time to where Habib was confident he can throw something wild at him and then fall into the takedown, which is something he did throughout the entire fight. When Habib was pressuring T-Bow, he would throw that eagle punch, that big lead uppercut, and just like today, he had an amazing ability to duck under the counter shots. Gleason t -Bow would always try to counter him with his right hook. He's in southpaw, Habib's in orthodox, opposite stances, but t -Bow, instead of trying to counter him with the left hand, he would try to come with the lead right hook, and again, Habib was just able to duck under it and go for the takedown. From there, Gleason t was able to defend every single one. t defended 13 takedowns of the fight. Not one of Habib's takedowns were even close to being secured. And that is due to the strength of t as well as some of his skills against the cage, but most of it was balance and strength and power and size. Again, the absence of USADA is a huge thing to look at in this fight. t was so much bigger than Habib, and when he took down Habib for a brief moment, you can see the gap of strength. There were moments where T-Bow would literally bulldoze right through Habib in shocking fashion. Literally looked like a fight between two fighters in different weight classes. And the biggest thing T-Bow had against Habib were the knees to the body and one knee to the head that stunned Habib in the fight. It was one of the biggest shots Habib has ever taken in his entire career. He went to throw that eagle punch and fall into the takedown, right? That's something he did the entire fight. Explode and come up really high and then drop quickly to the legs of T-Bow, but he fell into a knee. And you can see it stunned his balance a bit. He had to get his balance back by pushing up against Gleason T-Bow and then work for the takedown right afterward. But the knees to the body were a huge thing for T-Bow as well. So ultimately, looking back at the fight, it was extremely wild. It wasn't that technical of a fight. Just a lot of exchanges, a lot of wild striking getting thrown out there, a lot of focus on who's pressuring and who was engaging. Not a lot of takedowns were getting secured. And when the takedowns were getting defended, it was usually because T-Bow was just that much stronger than him. He had the kind of balance and the kind of size to fight off the much smaller Habib in there. But ultimately, through this, I do believe that Habib won the fight each round was extremely close to call, but if you look at the smallest details of the fight to really dictate who won this, I think you have to go with Habib in this one. I can see an argument where Habib loses the third round because he did get stunned in there and he lost on quote unquote damage in that round compared to the other two. In the first and second, Habib out damaged Gleason t as well as having more control time 
pressure them more, more octagon control, as well as being more aggressive in those two rounds. So ultimately, I can see first and second going to Habib, third round going to Gleison Tebow. That's probably the most logical way to look at it. Or Habib won every single round. That's generally how I can see this fight. So fascinating look back at this. Very interesting fight. The closest fight of Habib's entire career. The most adversity he had to face in terms of not able to take the opponent down. Having to strike with him for the majority of the fight. As well as getting stunned once by an absolute powerhouse in Gleison Tebow. So I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown. If you did, make sure to thumbs up. If you enjoyed my content, make sure to subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.